Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. With Memorial Day behind us, the gardening season is officially in full gear. If you do any form of gardening or even just like to look at gardens and flowers, we have our experts here this afternoon to give us some timely tips and to highlight problems to watch for or to prevent. It's a pleasure to welcome back two guests from the University of Vermont Plant and Soil Science Department, Leonard Perry and Anne Hazelrig. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Judy. Now, Leonard, let's start with the flowers that you have right next to you. Okay, I brought some spring bulbs, if you can believe that. <laughs> this has been kind of a light year, and these are a couple of later ones. Uh, the great piacinths that a lot of people are familiar with. They may not be familiar with the various types, too. They're, you know, the dark purple, and these are starting to go by, um, but there are ones that are lighter color. I've even got one that's kind of white at the top, and that's called Mount Hood. Looks like a snow mm -hmm. on a mountain, so the um, great piacinths are a great one. Then I brought a, a couple of taller ones here. Actually, one's a bulb, and that's the one with the little uh, hanging flowers here with the little green tips on it. That's called summer snowflake, leucogium. It's just great. You know, I like to interplant that. That's about a foot, a little over a foot high, a foot and a half high, 15 inches, and interplanted amongst the bed so it, while other perennials are coming up, that's in bloom. As long as this, as well as this one, this is a perennial. This is the variegated Solomon seal. Uh, you can see the lovely little flowers, kind of similar to others as far as the little green tips, but tubular hanging down from the, uh, where the leaves come out, and the leaves have this variegation around. It. So just a lovely uh, perennial. Very pretty. Now you've also brought some annuals. I did, and uh, these each year we have, of course, we talk about the uh, new flowers at the Burlington Waterfront. These are going in this year, so I saved out a few to show. Uh, this is a new one. These, some of these are brand new uh, for this coming year. This is a Verbena Royal Romance. I just love that color, which is really nice. And then we have one here that's a uh, Calibracoa Super Bells. <laughs> a lot of people uh, may know it, but there's just many of these out now. That's a very popular plant, and this one in particular has some. <laughs> lovely. There's several that have this kind of variegation on the flowers yeah, with, with the yellow and, and various colors. So that's a nice one. And then this one is one we've had before, but we'll have again. This is a salvia. A lot of people may not know this salvia. They think about the thick red ones, but this has a tall stem. This will actually get up about 18 inches to 24 inches high really? when it's mature. Uh, and it has these stalks that come up with these um, flowers that are bluish on top. And this is called um, Blue Emotion. And that's a real nice one. Uh, Bidens, that's one people may not know uh, too much and there's any, it normally was yellow but uh, there are a lot of new ones out now and this is one um, that's a very new one called a painted red and so we're just really excited to have that one this year and there's several new Bidens. They make nice fillers in amongst their very low plants in the garden so kind of like the verbena, uh, kind of low. But as far as tall for heights, we have several of these this year. This is called the uh, elephant ear. Um, Colocasia, and but there's green ones and uh, dark leafed yeah, ones that. as you see there and it looks like kind of an elephant's ear and they, mm -hmm. they'll get fairly tall depending on the variety maybe two feet and some may get six feet or more high. Six feet high. So yeah I'm not sure how tall this will get we'll see. <laughs> Guess we're gonna find out. <laughs> we will find out and then yeah. if you need a filler around that ag against that dark leaf this one would I be love great. These. Yeah these there are any number of these out this is called breathless white, it's a spurge, um, but they're, they're just a great filler and there's some the breathless blush we've had before has kind of a darker uh, leaf to it, but this is just a great plant that we like to interplant. And finally, oh, I've shown pictures before, but I have a little one of these. This is a newer variety of the Bolivian begonia. It has these flowers that hang down and uh, this makes a great basket plant or a container where it can just droop over the side. This is called Mistral Dark Red, so a Bolivian begonia. You. Some of the new ones we'll have down at Burlington Waterfront this year. Fun to look at. Mm -hmm. Now, Anne, you had UVM's Plant Diagnostic Clinic. What are you seeing this time of year? Well, this was very, uh, it was great that Will brought this in. He brought this. Uh, <laughs> if you say so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was in his tree. Enough, um, <laughs> and I had heard these were uh, really common this year. These are eastern tent caterpillars. Okay. And they're in hardwood trees. They make these big tents. These guys are active. <laughs> yeah, um, they are. I'm going to put them back in the bag. Good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but they make these oops, big so tents <laughs> oops, in, in trees, and then there's a lot of frass that's the uh, droppings mm -hmm. of the caterpillar. So they're just, they make a big mess in a tree. And um, I guess insecticides <laughs> don't work very well against these, especially once they're this big, because mm -hmm. they're kind of ready to go off and, and uh, become 
pupate and so become adults. So what should you do? Well, a lot of people think they want to burn them out of trees, which I think is not a good idea. But if you can get them out of the tree with a rake or something, uh, put them in soapy water, uh, landfill them, whatever. Mm -hmm. You just want to destroy the larvae. Okay. And so uh, now, what else are you seeing? <laughs> uh, well, I've got a couple slides. Uh, this is um, something I'm seeing in my garden. <laughs> uh, Oh, this Fraught, is sad. Yeah, asparagus. And, you know, we've had some late frosts this year, and this is, we might be seeing a lot of shepherd's crooking. That's what that curled over mm -hmm. uh, is called. That can either be called caused by frost, or it can also be caused by this little insect that we just saw this picture. We can put that back up. It's called the as common asparagus beetle, and it's a really pretty beetle. It's got a black back with six white spots. Um, and I'm seeing that in my asparagus right now. And the eggs are on the uh, stalks of the aspar asparagus. They're these little dark brown barrel-shaped eggs. So mm -hmm. they're really noticeable, but not very appealing if you're going to eat your asparagus. Yeah, I think so you have to picture that, too. Yeah, yeah, not very appealing. And the larvae of this uh, beetle sort of looks slug-like. Mm -hmm. And they can really uh, defoliate your plants. But their feeding can cause those um, spears to crook. So the best thing for home gardeners to do is just to hand pick those beetles. Okay. You could use something like pyganic. Mm -hmm. That would be an organic insecticide, but hand picking them. Okay, good. Um, all right, it's lilac season. Some parts of the state, the lilacs are already passed. Leonard, you brought some examples? I did. <clears throat> Several different things to show here, Judy. Um, one is the range of colors. A lot of people may just think about the regular um, lilac color, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty much probably this one here, but there are pinks. Um, there, and this is kind of a pinkish form here. Uh, ones that are actually reddish. There's dark purples, of course, whites. Um, and then there's several types. Um, there's, of course, the lilacs that are start blooming. Most people know the common lilac, uh, which is what most of these, or basically all of these are. But then later come the um, late lilacs, the Preston hybrids, and they have a very uh, kind of different leaf. It's a oh, lot yeah. more elongate. You can see the veins in it more. Those are just now budding up while these are in bloom. So it's a really good way to extend your lilac bloom season. Another one that kind of blooms in between are the small leaf, like the Miss Kim lilac, uh, very small leaves as you see here, and you see the buds just coming out there. So you have blooms here, blooms here, then the late lilac blooms. You can have seven weeks of blooms actually with lilacs, just choosing different varieties. Uh, people always ask me about pruning, so I brought a branch here with some old wood from last year, which you could uh, prune that out now mm -hmm. actually. Um, when these are through, people ask, well, should you cut the old flowers off? I like to leave them for the seeds for the birds. They obviously uh, come back and bloom fine uh, for me, but if it's not aesthetic thing, um, you want to cut it off. Cut it off soon after bloom because shortly after they'll start uh, flowers for next year. Mm -hmm. Cut it too late in the season midsummer, you'll be cutting off next year's flowers. Okay. So, um, but you know, you could cut this back to here mm -hmm. and then just this flower, or you could cut it just back to here right. and then you have a shoot for next year here and a shoot here. So. That would be the way to prune those. I'm going to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> In talking with you over the years, I know that one of the gardening challenges that you sometimes face is wildlife. We all face that, especially deer. Yeah, we, um, I had, tend to have deer, have had them this year. They kind of, I think I mentioned before, kind of chewed on the tulips. So uh, <laughs> trying something different, there are always things different. You've you got the sprays, the granules, you can put out any number of products. This is called a Predator Guard. It's solar charged with a rechargeable battery. And at night, these are red lights, LED lights that blink. And you put it at the height, so like if it's raccoon, you put it low, deer maybe four to five feet high, and all night you see these blinky red lights out there. And apparently that they think it may be a predator, and so it kind of scares them off. But other things you can put up, I've tried and uh, work if you know enough, just some sort of cord, just regular white line here. This is a heavy duty, um, line that you use to actually affix and put along the top of a deer fence and that works really well. You don't see that as much as you do this. Mm -hmm. But remember deer have poor sight too so anything like that what you can do is put up some flagging tape on it, one so you see it, but mainly so they see it. Um, and white is the color you want. Uh, deer when they're fleeing, you see their white tail bobbing, the mm -hmm. white tailed deer. That's what this signifies. So when they come out and they see this flapping in the breeze, it's instinctive that, okay, there may be danger here. Really? So that's that's one of the things. So white flagging tape. And of course, 
course, if all these different things fail, deer fencing. <laughs> and then this is uh, it's fairly unobtrusive here. This it's is pretty lightweight too. Yeah, it's very plastic. lightweight. It's got a very thin wire in it, so it really will withstand mm -hmm. some um, weight against it. You can get it all kinds of heights. I use um, have small beds, so I only go five feet high. But if you have a bigger area, you have to go higher. Okay. Now, Anne, you have a plant disease that's important to highlight. Well, uh, <clears throat> I have a. Um, I know a lot of people are transplanting yep. new plants outside, and they've looked fine in so inside or in greenhouses. And then once you put them out in your garden, they struggle a little bit because they're, um, uh, you know, they have transplant shock. With, they've got new hot sun, uh, wind conditions. This is also cold. This is cold damage on tomatoes. Oh, okay. um, so what I tell gardeners, I think I have another. Uh, uh, yeah. So what I tell gardeners is when they put out a transplant, and you know those older bottom leaves are going to look just bad, and it's no big deal. As long as there's new healthy growth, prune off those lower leaves, um, give the plants some light fertilizer, water, and they'll grow right out of it. So don't be shocked when you see all these dying leaves on the bottom of your, of your transplants. Okay. Um, anything else we should be looking for to this time of year? Well, just uh, mainly that, you know, watch your plants, your mm -hmm. new plants in the garden because we can still have some cold nights, we can have hot sunny days, we're gonna, uh, we've had some hot temperatures recently, mm -hmm. so um, that's a problem. This is another uh, problem that we might be some coming up because it's gonna be strawberry season soon. It's these uh, strawberries that have these little seedy button ends. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, they're fine to eat, they don't look so great, but uh, it's caused by this uh, stinging of a little insect called the tarnished plant bug, and they actually are seed feeders, so they've fed on those ends of the strawberry plants. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so it's more of a curiosity. I don't think it's worth spraying, in, home gardeners spraying insecticides for, um, but they're perfectly fine to eat, but they look a little funny. <laughs> <laughs> now, Leonard, do you have other topics and tips on your website as well as some garden tours that are coming up? Um, do, Judy, and I uh, wanted to mention a couple we have coming up. One is the uh, Gardens and Nurseries Tour on Monday, August 8th to Northern Vermont. We'll be going to Full Circle Gardens in Essex Junction, Perennial Pleasures Nursery over in East Hardwick, where we'll have an Ingerstall cream tea lunch. <laughs> um, Rachel Kane, who runs that, has one of the top collections of garden flocks in the country, over 150 varieties which we'll see at their peak during that. Then we'll end up in Waitsfield, Vermont at the Von Trapp Nursery, which has some spectacular display gardens um, that overlook the mountains there and just a lot of different plants. So it should be a really good fun tour. And then we have another one coming up. It's very popular and this one is in fact almost full, uh, believe it or not, to back to Montreal to the Botanic Gardens, a day trip to see the Chinese lanterns, which are different each year. Um, and it's a great time. There's still plenty of color out in the Gardens, that's Monday, September 12th. So uh, if people are interested in information, and go to my website, Perry's Perennial Pages, um, to the Home Gardener section under the tours, um, and perrysperennials.info or .com take you there, and then under the event section, I've got links to those too. So uh, hopefully people uh, can join us on one of these great day tours. Yeah. Now, Anne, I know you also have some more important message to pass along to our viewers. Right. There's a new uh, rule. Uh, uh, instituted uh, May 1st, and that's a, um, we cannot move untreated firewood into Vermont. We've got two pests that are right on our borders, Asian longhorn beetle and emerald ash borer, and so we're trying to keep them out as long as possible. So uh, no, uh, if you bring, you're just not allowed to bring an untreated firewood, and that way we won't introduce this pest. So we're encouraging campers, go ahead and make a campfire, but buy your firewood locally. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And uh, if home gardeners have problems or questions, where can they get help? Always the Master Gardener Helpline. They're a great resource, uh, really good, knowledgeable gardeners, and um, the information's right there. Uh, Toll-free number, and also um, we have an email uh, site, too, where they can ask questions over email. Mm -hmm. And once again, the garden on the waterfront? Yeah, Burlington Waterfront Gardens this year in conjunction with uh, Parks and Recreation right down by the Echo Center and we'll have, you know, 75 to 80 or so different annuals, some of the newest ones coming out, some you've seen here for the first time today. Mm -hmm. Great, so we'll get a chance to see how they grow and check exactly. them out for their gardens. Exactly, and on my website again, uh, I have the results from and some pictures from previous years so people can see how a lot of these have done over the years. Great, well thank you both for joining us. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.
Thank you.